You beautiful, darling human beings, it is Tuesday, and it is a beautiful Tuesday, because today, December 5th, I get early access to the 1.0 launch of Against the Storm. Look in the corner of the screen, it says 1.0.1R. Oh, I've been very excited about this game's inevitable release. Um, uh, for those of you who are curious, this game releases on December 8th, which is Friday. I majored in math. Um, and I think that Against the Storm is a game that I, I was blown away by when I played it in early access. So I want to briefly talk about that. Then I'm going to restart the game. I actually have switched to a brand new profile to make sure that I relearn all the things because I'm pretty sure a lot has leaked out of my head. But um, I'm going to be starting fully fresh in case you've not seen the previous episodes. Um, but Against the Storm is a roguelike city builder that puts a ton of brilliant mechanics into the city building genre to address a lot of the core issues, and I'll talk about those when we're in, and just blends it into a marvelous problem-solving experience that feels like it's a lot more about judgment and a lot less about calculation. That's something that I really didn't like about uh, many of the city building experiences I've had in the past. Once you master the calculation of all the resources, well, buy another city building game. <laughs> Um, now, typically, until a game is launched, I'm ju I just, I'm, I can only get so hyped. Like, my hypometer, excuse me, sorry, that burp really got in there. Like, on my hype, hype meter, I go at most to, like, a three of excitement for a game, because until it's launched, you know, you can go to a hundred different forums and see a hundred different roadmaps from a hundred different games, like... You know, all of them are like, it's gotta be so good, right? But like, really, I wanna wait until this is the game so I can see what the game is. But every once in a while, I will play something in early access, like I did with Against the, the Storm. The world is plagued by the Blight Storm. And it was a vile cycle of destruction, ravaging everything in its path. The only safe haven is the smoldering city is day where the mysterious Scorched Queen reigns. <clears throat> You are one of her viceroys, a pioneer Good sent viceroy. into the wilds, tasked with establishing new settlements and acquiring valuable resources for the crown. Your goal is to help rebuild the smoldering city and secure the future of the queen's subjects. Yes. All right, so use WASD or the mouse to move the camera, terrific. So, as we're going back through the tutorial, okay, excuse me, let me, you know, scoot the cat away. She likes to, she likes to park in front of WASD. I typically let her put her head down by where the B key is and swing to the right. Okay, so, so I'm going to talk a, a little bit about the mechanics as I am experiencing them that I think are brilliant. WASD to move around. And uh, let me know how the audio is. WASD, oh. Neglecting your village will increase the queen's impatience and bring her wrath upon you. So this is, I mean, it's a little hard to see, but this is the loss meter. And you can see that it's broken into little pips. And there it is. Fulfilling your duties will increase the town's reputation, unlock new buildings, and eventually bring you to victory. So, immediately, this is something that I want to point out. I talked about this during the original playing of Against the Storm. But I really, really, really think it bears repeating because it's just sensational. One thing that I feel like German-style board games have taught uh, the whole game design community is that, sure, you can have the fun of your game, which might be trading or constructing or combat. You have the fun. But how do I know if I'm doing a good or bad job? What lets me know the first thing that is fun that I should do? What's that first bit of guidance? And so many, um, so many German style board games have like victory points. They will have some thing that you are trying to gain where you're constantly getting progress, constantly getting progress that gives you these little baby goals on the way to the larger goal of winning the game. And I love this. You have the, uh, this bar, the reputation bar, and of course the queen's impatience. Let me shrink myself, I'm way too huge, dude. Is this game from a German developer? I don't think so. A German-style board game is not really specifically connected to Germany anymore. Yeah, let me pull the... I'm going to pull the volume all the way down here. 
Test. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, let me let me actually Oh, I see. I I pulled the wrong string up. There we go. Is the term for those now Euro games? Yeah, I mean. Potato potato. All right. Choose a blueprint, select the crown. All right. Each expedition starts with the smallest text humanly possible and only a few essential blueprints. More will be given to you as you gain reputation. And we're going to pick this. Great. A space to resume. Of course. Look at my little guys. Build a woodcutter's camp and explore the forest. You have to keep the fire going at all times. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so, oh. Oh, my God. I love a good tutorialization. And this game just kicks ass with it. Like, it doesn't show me interface that I don't need until it's time for me to see it. Why is it so hot in this damn place? The RS has shrink myself. I'm way too huge, Dana. I'm still going on about his weight loss. I know. I know. He can talk. He is a monument to vanity. All right, so let's build a woodcutter's camp. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... And is R the... Yeah, that's right. I'm going to do it like this. All right, we're going to resume. So now my little guys will go build. Humans, beavers, lizards. So, I'm going to get to what I feel is the meat and potatoes of the game in a moment. I'm going to speed the game up. Fantastic. Okay, so we now need to add some workers here. And what do you know? Beavers are really good at wood cutting. What do you know? Beavers. And of course, oh, dude, the, the, they, I do feel that with a lot of strategy and city building games. UI is like half the design of the game. And this is really great. Like, you can see that when I click here, this has the little wood icon next to it to suggest that these guys are good at wood cutting. And I think alt shows, yeah, alt will show that I have three of these turkeys here. Okay. Okay, so these guys are cutting now. I know that there was a paint, wood, how do I do this? There's roads, decorations, all these other things are locked. Ah, yes. Mark trees, yes, yes. So now they're gonna cut into this glade and then afterwards I want them to cut these. All right, cool. So here's the other thing that I think is brilliant, right? So like we have a victory condition bar, we have a loss condition bar. Now the fun of the game is going to be managing resources, constructing things, unlocking new stuff, the usual kind of city building fun. Actually, how do I wanna explain this? Okay, so, so I was thinking of talking about this little by little as things were revealed, but I'm gonna talk about it holistically because again, I think that the design of this game is 10 out of 10 brilliant. I think it is one of the best designs I have seen in a digital game in ages. Stunning. What it does is first, it has victory and loss conditions right here that let you know how good or a bad job you are doing of the fun. The second thing is that it has these things called orders, which if you open up, it says, here are your objectives. Make two woodcutters camps. Collect this much wood in the woodcutters' camps. My reward is three more workers and 35% better woodcutting. And look at this. It also gives me one victory point, as it were. Right? So, if you've ever played a city building game, like, um, I, I, I always use Banished because it's like one of my absolute favorites. In, um, in Banished, what is it that I want to want to do? What should I be thrilled about and getting get excited about doing? What, what are those things? Well, in Banished, you play until you absolutely lose your entire population abruptly and you go, oh, oh, I guess I wanted to have a lot more uh, clothing for the winter. Then you restart and you start playing through again and then you go, oh, 
I guess I'll eventually need a big explosion of food once those kids grow up, right? You have these like moments where you're like, ah, oh my gosh. And then you restart and you learn. You don't have to do that in Against the Storm. Here is what you need to do. Here are your main objectives. And what do they do? They give you progress towards winning the game. So that's the second thing. The victory condition here, quests. I mean, they're called orders, but quests that let you know what it is that you want to want to do. And the third thing that I think is brilliant about this game is that the fun of a city builder, collecting resources, constructing things, getting more uh, territory and space and seeing your little turkeys running around doing stuff. Oh my God, that's amazing. And this game uses roguelike randomness elements in there that again, make it a game that is about judgment, not about calculation not about calculating the perfect way to balance all the resources that once you solve, you may as well put the game down because there's no more game to play. So we have this. I now need to build a second woodcutter's camp. And I believe that this can be moved. Yeah, I can move this around as I'm cutting more wood. So I actually think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to build another woodcutter's camp. And if I do this... If I hold shift, yeah, shift makes it small. There we go. Let me remove this stuff. So great. What are there actual turkey turkeys? I don't know, Zelly Starship. I know that there are beavers, humans, and lizards, much like there are in real life. So what I want to point out is that we have this first woodcutter's camp that has three beavers operating it. I need three more workers here. But notice if I look at this order, I complete it. Hey, my reward is three more beavers and better woodcutting. Deliver that reward and boom, it gives me a new quest. So uh, I need to assign five beavers as woodcutters and I need to cut through the forest to discover two glades. Something that I think is very clever about the quests in this tutorial, now that I know a lot more, in the actual game, what I'm doing over the arc of it is building all these varying structures to explore all these unexplored areas. In these are unknown resources. So again, this is what I mean by this roguelike quality. The ro uh, I don't know what problem I'm going to have when I'm here. I have to dig through it, discover what the problem is, and then use my current tools to try to solve that. Um, so... The entire game is just digging through glades, assigning workers to do things. That's that's like literally the game. And so, hey, it makes it a quest. I mean, that's just, that's just good tutorialization, right? That is just good old fashioned tutorialization. You, you, you. All right. And so, oh, uh, how do I close this? Right click, great. It's now gonna start chopping through here. I also need to choose new buildings, shelter. Can accommodate any villager, but won't satisfy the need for species-specific housing. Has to be built near a hearth. Okay, so let's make some roads here. We're going to make a little pathy-wathy. Time to make the most boring thing ever. Let's go ahead and build some houses. Uh, let's do one. So each of these has three... So right now, I have a total population of three and six is nine and three is 12. So I should need four of these. <coughs> Great. So we're digging through the glades. Shows 12 population. Ah, look at that. It's like right there. Circles, is, you've probably explained this already, but what makes this game a rogue light? So roguelike and roguelite are basically marketing terms uh, that are effectively still focused on a game in which, as you play through it, you can lose and need to start over again and play through it again. Also, the notion of random elements, the idea of unlocking more tools for those following runs, the idea of losing everything when you are done, really, really, really common. <laughs> oh, I don't need to text it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I am live. It's currently 2.47. I'm live until 7 p.m. So I'm live for... Oh God, what do you know? Four more hours. 
Alright, orders ready to be completed. Go, 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 go! Alright, what, what are our next uh, goals? Small Forger's Camp. And we also need to do vegetables in Small Forger's Camp. The reward is vegetables. Okay, so here are the mass broccoli patches. Okay. So let's go ahead and... Oops, I need to click on this. The next thing I have is a Small Forger's Point. Great. Scutation says, why are the houses on the right facing in towards the north-south roads while the houses on the left are facing towards the east-west road? This is bothering me to agree, which I can't explain. It's because I knew you were going to be tuned in, Scutagium, and I was just like, how do I piss this person off? And I just made, you know what? Let me do something that will hurt you even more, okay? Watch this. I'm going to unlock this small villager's camp. God, I can't stand Scutagium, okay? Uh, right here, I'm going to build this. See, see how I have enough room to place this right here? We're going to put it facing that way. Is that okay with you? It's okay. Don't worry. I'm going to build a little path there. Oh, hold on. I'm going to build a little path. There we go. Can I not build this here? There we go. It's fine. It's fine. It's not that long of a time. It's not that long of a time. <laughs> All right. Who, who is good at foraging? Look at this. It just shows the icon there. Love to see it. I think I can also do like that. Uh, and do I need to... I don't think I need to assign anything. I think they just go forage nearby. Yeah, look at them go. Oh. Yeah, do these houses look so cute together. So cute, just like you. And Scutagium, that does include you. You look adorable, if I'm being honest. Mark trees for harvest. Oh, shit, we've dug into a glade. All right, so let me go ahead and mark some more trees. You know, don't even care. All those, please. Uh, what other orders do we have? We just need to collect a little bit more vegetables. Perfect. Scutagium says, I'm not offended, just physically uncomfortable with the lack of symmetry. Well, that's good. I mean, this is an opportunity for growth for you, I assume. <laughs> now, if you're seeing a little bit of stuttering, I am getting that. I, I don't know why. Like, my CPU's not being choked at all. You can see I'm here. But, dude, it is, like, really hot in my house. Let me... Everyone stay here. I, I, just, I just have to figure out why it's so hot. Because it's, like, boiling in this room. Give me one second. Is it because I'm here? Is it me? No, they say it. Of course, I set the temperature on the air conditioner and then I didn't turn on the air conditioner. I just, <laughs> IT people telling me to turn it off and turn it on again. What they really should do is say, well, did you turn it on? Except that's a little rude. I think that's why they tell you to turn it off and on again. All right, excuse me, sweet pea. All right, so we're almost done completing this. So I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. How did you figure that out? <laughs> I looked at the interface. Growl Graman 2. <laughs> I still think it's just you. I mean, I'm turned on. I don't see why that wouldn't be the reason why I'm overheating. All right, what do we need to do now? Stonecutter's camp, and we need to make some clay. Great. So we unlock this. Oops. I'm hitting the wrong buttons, so I click this. Unlock the stone cutters camp. Click it. Stone cooters. Where is the there there it is. Dude, look look at this interface. Look at this. Look at the beautiful work of when I hover over those things, they swell up the same way my biceps will swell up by around this time next year. Cause I'm going to the gym, not because I'm <laughs> injecting silicon into them. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
I waffle says the AC can't even handle this raw sexual energy. I mean, that's what I said to the AC guys. I'm like, is there any chance you can fix this? But not in a way that a normal house might want it fixed. Like, I'm really a little more attractive than most AC units are used to. Get the clay. Yeah, take your little boxes. Dust Scrooge says, I'm swelling with you. It is not my biceps. Okay, okay, I walked into that. I, you know what? I take, that's my fault. That's on me. I'll be the first one to admit it. I did kind of make some of you say that. How do you know how many houses you need? These ones say that they can house up to three residents. And then up in the top left corner, it says 15. So that's why I have five houses. And I want my next person to have a home, but I also want to do it in a way that makes Scutagium upset. So we're going to do it like that. Okay, so we have done this falling order. Ooh, newcomers. All right, so I'm going to deliver this. But before I do this, there's newcomers. So do I want the grain and these workers, or do I want these resources and these workers? So, eventually, we will be producing things. Eventually, it will be something like you have an order to make, I'm going to make this up, a, a, a beer. So to make beer, you would need some sort of thing to ferment, which could be grains. It could be, um, I don't know enough about the manufacture of alcohol. Could be licorice. I don't know, can you ferment licorice? I don't know, maybe maybe you can ferment bees. I don't know, put some bees in a barrel for long enough and it becomes mead. I think I read that somewhere. Um, yeah, hops, that's the other one. Yeah, you have like an ingredient, but then you need a container. So maybe you have a woodcutter and the woodcutter makes barrels, or maybe you have a masonry, which can make clay pots. So this is kind of where the judgment comes in, where as you're playing, you're going, okay, with the buildings that I have unlocked and that I have, how can I satisfy these orders using these resources? But hey, if I'm using, um, you know, some of my food to ferment and turn into beer, then oh my gosh, what if I have used too much of it? And then my, my citizens are don't have anything to eat. So let me close this first. I'm going to open up this. Harvester's camp. An advanced camp can gather large and giant resource nodes in addition to small ones. Can collect plant fiber and weed. All right, so I guess I'll just make a harvester's camp. All right, so... Yeah, this is the game. That looks like a Scutagium approved road right there. That's some good stuff. Newcomers are waiting. I'm just gonna get this one because I don't know what I'm doing. Perfect. Harvesters, let's just put some, you know what? I'm gonna get two lizards harvesting. I would trust a lizard to do this. So we're gonna get some of the plant fibers. Oh, here's the storm. The storm is here. What's logistics? You know, I, I already know all this. Don't, don't, don't ever put me in a situation where I have to read, okay? Delayed events. Oh, that's right. Logistics is new. Okay, fine. Every building has its own internal storage where the goods it produces or gathers are temporarily stored. Knew that. When the internal storage reaches its limit, the goods in it will be transported to the main warehouse by a worker. I knew that. While transporting, it's important to keep in mind that villagers have a limited carry capacity because they're not becoming power hot like Champlot. So they might need to walk between their workplace and the main warehouse multiple times. Goods kept in the building's internal storage can also be accessed by workers from other production buildings. If two buildings are close enough to use each other's internal storage, an animated dotted line will be visible between them. It will? Sometimes deliveries and production might stall for a while because of breaks. Every few minutes, workers will return to a nearby hearth to eat and rest. God, this is why you should never give workers rights. Uh, during a break, they'll consume at least one item of food and try to fulfill their needs. Clothing, services. <laughs> I had a tough day at work. I need to change. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, I'm also streaming this all day tomorrow as well. And if you want your Baldur's Gate 3 fix, y'all have to wait till Thursday.
Ah, a building destroyed by the storm can be rebuilt or salvaged. So, this is where pausing is good, huh? Food, building materials. So I got like nothing. So here, I'm actually gonna move this wood cutter over to here. And I'm gonna, is there a hotkey for this? F? Get all those trees, please. This guy, I'm also gonna move the wood cutter over to here in a scotagium approved fashion. F. It's a little hard to manipulate this because I don't know if you can see my cat's ear right by the queue in Team Liquid, her ear. She's leaning on me a little bit hard right now. Okay, so let's just throw the humans in there. Um, so let's see here. So do I want... Parts. Right. Okay. Uh, Rat Packs is free. Pick up and move of the already constructed buildings. That's kind of cool. For some of the buildings, yeah. For some of the buildings. So I think you can actually see that these are on wheels. These buildings on wheels can move about. Because there's a lot of things that are foraged, and once you're done foraging with them, you don't need this here. But things like the houses are not on wheels. Um, can I even produce parts? I don't know if any of these can produce stuff. These, these are just gathering things. Oh, well. So let's see. It wants me to do a harvester's camp and to get some plant fibers. All right, I'm just going to ignore things and just do what the orders are. Too soon for dangerous glades. Uh-oh. Never notice the wheels? Well, as you know, I'm obsessed with wheels. Because all I ever do is talk in circles. Didn't. <laughs> okay, so I completed this. Deliver. Hey, objective. We need to make some planks, bricks, and fabrics. Terrific. Rewards are parts and, and workstation upgrades. Okay. Anier says, you're just a very well-rounded person, day nine. Hey, I'm trying to lose weight. You back off. <laughs> I hate well-intentioned people. You should have thought more about what you said. All right, I have a crude war. Yo, look at these dotted fucking dotted lines. Holy shit, I'm doing it like this. Oh my God, no longer do I need these turkeys wandering every which way. We got dotted lines. We got dotted lines. There it is. God dabbing is not cool! Lockwatt says, I wish I had as good an attitude about my weight as Day9 does. Well, Lockwatt, you should, because let me tell you, you look great today. And I know you'll get there. Herbalist camp is idle. What? I don't give a shit about it. Scouts are idle in Herbalist camp. Get out. Alright. Lockwatz is understanding that he cannot see me. It's still nice to hear. Human brains are weird. Got you, Lockwatts. I got you, baby. Alright. We playing the new Warhammer RPG on release? Oh my god, dude, that's right. Rogue Trader is out in two days? Too many games have come out. Too many games have come out. Too many game. Too many games have come out. Too many games have come out. I think that that should be illegal. That should be against the law. There should only be one new game released per month so that my brain can wrap its head around that. I've thought about this idea for about 10 seconds. This should not be the way that it is. This, this is a bad suggestion. And I feel bad for having said it. Oh my god. Can we bribe you to stream it? You can bribe me to do whatever you want. How else do you think I eat? How do you think I pay for things? I mean, come on, we could... <laughs> it's either you bribe me or I'm starting to stream Raid Shadow Legends, okay? It's like one of the two. All right, okay, so let's go ahead and get the workshop going. So let's see, we can... Limits locked for now? I wonder what that means. Oh, I assume that this is a feature. 
is a feature. Start publishing a price chart. If you pay, if you pay me ten thousand dollars right now, I'll stream whatever you want for a day. How about that? <laughs> is that? I, I'll literally, literally, if every day I stream, one of you paid like ten grand for me to just do something, that would make my job easier. That really would. No, you know what? The market just shifted. If you pay me fifty grand, I'll do whatever you want for a day. It doesn't even have to be a game. But give me fifty thousand dollars, okay? On a crow says, "Okay, calling my bank." On a crow says, "Ah, shit, okay, okay." Well, I want to let you know. Although market conditions have changed, I'm willing to give you a deal of twenty thousand dollars. That's thirty thousand dollars of saving for paying me to do shit for a day. In fact, if you booked a whole week, my God, you could have. You save so much money, you could put a down payment on a house. Arclight says, you just described advertising. I know, I just described humanity uh, and the world. Let's go ahead and hit the space bar button. Carter Gorn says, I've got $5 a month for you to do whatever you want. Oh my God, be still my beating heart. Sean, I just want you to take that money because you're doing stuff. Oh! Day 9 dailies are back for 20k. Well, I mean, truth be told, I believe that Bobby Kotick is going to step down from Activision Blizzard on the 1st of January, as was announced. And if he does so, then let me tell you, next year, we're doing some Blizzard StarCraft action, man, for sure. All right. Uh, looks like these things are slowly getting made. Okay, so l let me just briefly talk about some of the logistics stuff that's going on here. So, one of my goals is to make fabric. Why? Because if I go to these orders, you can see that I need to make four fabrics. I don't know what that gear is, but whatever. And so, I can make fabrics out of plant fibers, which I have from collection here. Uh, leathers, which I would get uh, from other ways. Or reeds, which I would get from other ways. So, depending upon the resources that you are collecting, you can use different resources <coughs> Excuse me. Different resources to make different materials. Similarly, if I want to make bricks, I can use the clay that I've found, or I can use stone. Also, I can use uh, copper bars or crystallized dew to make myself some pipes. So what is this? Choose a cornerstone. Building materials are the foundation of every settlement. Production is 50% quicker in this building. Yeah, the crude workshop, yeah. The Royal Academy wants a detailed map of the region. It will supply anyone willing to help in 20 reeds and 20 clay for each discovered blade. Kazaku says, alrighty then, you slide. Never bad though, never good. Stay awesome. <laughs> ah, my nose. All right, so see, we're getting some of this stuff done. I'm gonna enjoy sitting back and chilling. Dang, he says, yeah, it was definitely a rhetorical question. I don't even remember what the question was. Because here's the thing, for me to be able to talk for a few hours, I just say things that enter into my mind. And then if someone's like, that's a great point, Sean. I'm like, what was I talking about? I was, what? What? Dude, look how, my, look how cool my lizards are, man. They got these cool hats. Lizards look good when they're collecting flax. Streamer of consciousness, yeah. <laughs> you got a pyro skank. It's a great point, Sean. What? What? They all have names too? No way, this guy has a name? Oh, this is Chalk Stormclaw. Fairward Amberjack. <laughs> Engelbert Humperdinck. Brunhild Marshblood. <laughs> okay, I mean, I understand. I understand that literally mashing two words together. Fit hose graybone. <laughs> oh my god, these, these names. Let me tell you something. You can almost do this. You can almost just take two words together and mush them and it kind of works. Like marsh blood, it kind of works. Uh, no, this is this is not Thithaws. This is, this is Thithose. Thithose Greybone. Who is this? Hollis Barkhide. 
It's so close. Skipper Ashkin. <laughs> Chalk Storm Claw. Oh, this is Chad Nose Knees. Uh, Candlesmith, too, says, Can I be a guy? I mean, I don't know. It depends on what your first name is. Because if your first name is Brunhild Marshblood, I got you. Or if your name is Brandon Marshblood. <laughs> Clementine Marshblood. Oh, it's a whole family of Marshbloods. This is stag steak thrust. Oh, look, I completed my order. Okay, give me the reward. Objective. Cut through the forest to discover one dangerous glade or forbidden glade. Change scrolls to fabric in the ancient shrine. Valuable, uh, deliver one ancient tablet. Oh, whoa. All right. All right, excuse me, Despy. So let's first just go straight into the danger glade. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to unlock, probably, a human house, a lizard house, or a beaver house. Let me tell you something. I am absolutely pro-beaver. I'm super pro-beaver. And I now, now that I've said that, I understand what all of you are immediately thinking. And I did not think that before I said that. But now that I'm thinking it, I'm pro-beaver. ha <laughs> Now that we're here, I want to let you know that I'm not going to change my order. All right, let's get another road in there. <laughs> All right. Anyone here seen Naked Gun? Movie's, movie's quite funny. What is this, newcomers? Dude. Dude, there's two beavers here. Ship it. Okay, so here we have the ancient shrine. Threats. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh. 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 So I can deliver. I can deliver wood. I can also deliver fabrics here. Oh my god, that's right. These come out and they just kill some of my guys. Oh my god, a human! All the humans are dead! Ah! Uh, uh, ah! Oh my god, the hardest part about that is that I don't care at all. It's weird to just feel so dead inside. Absolutely no marsh bloods. It's just, they're actually just the literal bloods right now. Um, what are the things that I needed to do here? Which was change the resource from scrolls to fabric. Did that? Found in the dangerous glade. Rewards! The chest of ancient stuff. Seen your last graybone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like, I know that this is. It's one of those things that it's almost a little too effective. A little too effective to just mash two words together. Brandon Sanderson does this all the time. Like the Stormlight archives. It's like really good. I mean, you can mess it up. You can be like, this is my villain, Flayface. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Billy Zane. Billy Zane. Billy Zane. I'd like to say happy 141 months in a row. So I just want to thank you for allowing us to fully inspect, view, and appreciate your beaver, lizard, and other constructive paraphernalia. You got it. Also, <laughs> nice. Incredibly thick, solid, and tight. Billy Zane, good to see you. How are you? you see, I've been subbed here longer than I've been married. Our relationship is strong. I know. I, lo I love that this commitment boils down to a automatic financial transaction. I feel the love is so strong. Actually, speak speaking of words... Um... Alright, sorry. I had to fire off some of those ones. All right, so uh, this is it's sending out a threat ASAP. Wait, oh, the humans that I assigned to it are dead. That's why the research isn't progressing very well. All right, a lizard, a beaver, and a human enter into a shrine. Disturbing the ruins of the great civilization. It'll be soon. Can you fuckos please just go? Oh, 
Oh my god. Sean, I'm, I'm begging you to press the investigate button. Oh my god. Thank you. Thank you. I love it when you beg. I love it. Because otherwise I'm not going to pay attention to you. I love it when you beg. All right. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That to, to, to activate the button, you hit the button. Um, plant fiber per minute. Choose a cornerstone. Eggs. Mark trees for harvest. You got it. All right. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I'm a fan of various. I, I think that we should we should be generally steering away from backseating today, but not not aggressively. <clears throat> Ah, uh, Poppy. Fast Talk says, hey, day seven. How is it on the coffee cup when it's eight ahead of the board? I mean, Fast Title, I want to be honest with you. I really think that you might not be human because you type like chat GPT. Three more dead, don't even care. It doesn't even bother me. Absolutely. Follow your orders. I'm, I'm trying. There it is. Woohoo! Nice shirts on. Thank you. Uh, and then I need to click this to deliver it. And look at that. We filled up the victory bar. I've done it. All right. Let me, uh, let me try to just... Uh, all right, unlocked content, everything. Sushi Toad, I, I love Against the Storm. I think it's so good. We're doing it all day today and tomorrow. Press any key to start. All right. Uh, it's not starting. Can someone help me find the any key? Okay, there we go. Villagers with low resolve will start leaving, increasing the queen's impatience. Okay. Keeping the resolve exceptionally high will grant passive reputation over time. Oh, that's right. So, like, I'm remembering this now. I'm remembering this, I'm remembering this, I'm remembering this. Because, like, with... There are city builder games where, again, I want to talk about the fun of the game, but then I want to talk about the things that force you to do the fun, right? You heard me talk about there are there are things that are fun in city building games, like managing the resources, constructing stuff, taking up more and more and more space, advancing through whatever tech tree there is, and so on. Um, one of the kind of balancing act elements that games have increasingly done in the last 10 years is created this idea of your workers need to be happy. Um, if they are your lower tier workers in the Anno games, they need vodka. <laughs> or your higher tier workers need uh, certain forms of entertainment. And if you don't provide that, then they will just do a worse job producing whatever resource they produce. So it's trying to increase this sense of like, I need to care about everything. And so I always hated that because it just never felt satisfying. It felt like someone was gonna come along and kick me in the face. And if I did it, I would instead get the normal game back again. You know what I mean? Everyone was producing things in a very fine fashion. Everything was going predictably. And then it was like, ah, suddenly it's not good enough. You need to make the citizens happy. And so in this game, I like the way that it ties it back into the win condition, where if I am like keeping humans well-fed with like beef jerky and warm underpants or whatever it is, then all of a sudden their resolve will build. Um, and then I will make win condition progress. So I remember there was a um, mission where I wasn't sure that I could win by just completing orders. So I just made sure all the underwear went into the dryer in the morning, got it nice and tumbled, so that way you got toasty buns when you put that on. I made sure that all our citizens were super happy, and as a result, that gave me enough victory points that I was able to win. And that felt cool, because I wasn't intending to do that. I just was in this situation. 
where I couldn't quite complete the orders effectively, and that's that's how it worked. And I, I, that's something that I really think is lovely about the game. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. So. Oh yeah, it's showing it drop down. Satisfying your villagers' needs with complex food, homes, and services will increase their resolve. Each species has a different mix of needs. It's hard to please everyone all of the time. One of the hardest lessons in life. But as a content creator, I still manage to do it. <laughs> I think fake arrogance is so funny. <laughs> What? All right, all right, fine. Yeah, I mean, farmers can plant only on farm fields, and those can only be built on fertile soil. And fertile soil can only be built on a solid earth. Um, crops are planted in the first season, drizzle, and harvested during the second season, clearance. Or the harvest during the second. Yeah, okay, sure. Build a farm, harvest grain, and serve some ale in a tavern. Very well. You know... <laughs> I know this is a cop-out, right? I know. But I think I'm gonna have my settlement only plant oregano. Because they'll be working all season long, and then it'll be harvest time. They'll be like, oh, my tummy, I'm so hungry. And I'll be like, we have condiments. <laughs> Would you like some ketchup? Will you put some oregano on there for some herbs? <laughs> Man, and this is when I would immediately name this Day 9 TV Town and say that I'm doing this for you. Love harvesting some drizzle, indeed. All right, good morning. Good morning, yes, please. Maybe, do we need to, do you wanna? Okay, yeah, do we, are we gonna, what are, what are we doing? Okay, hold on. The spice must flow, indeed. Oh, we're just we're gonna sit in the lap now. Ow, ow. Here, this is this is as, about as good of an idea as I have. If I raise this, and then I can scoot in, you can lie in the lap. This is not comfortable for me, but it's comfortable for the cat, and that's all that matters. And Bronstein, thanks for the gifted five. Have some oregano on the house, as usual. And Bronstein, thanks for the gifted five. Okay, so we are now going to click on this, unlocks a small farm. So if I recall correctly, I can build a small farm. I don't remember what the correct way to face these is, but I think that's right. Food production, farm fields, and I think I just drag. Hell yeah. Okay, so uh, if I also expand out their needs, Housing, human housing, porridge. Oh yeah, porridge, biscuits, religion, leisure, clothing, and pie. That sounds like a human. I like to live in a house. Generally one for humans. I want some food. I want some food. I want some food. Give me the greatest fashion. I want some food. Uh, give me my religion. Great. Beavers want housing. Then they also want biscuits and pickles and clothes and leisure. They like education. Humans don't like education, but beavers, they fucking love that shit, man. <laughs> I don't know where this cough's coming from. Jerky. Skewers for lizards. Pie. Oh my god, meat and pie. I've, I've had the college diet as well. It's healthy. Pickled goods. Brawling. I want meat. I want fighting. And I really want to. I really want to go to church. <laughs> 1.0 releases on Friday, feeble. But I am what is known as elite hacksaw, so I have access to this a little bit early. I know. I know. I can. I can see the tears. Uh, wait. I need to cancel this. This is. Yeah, let's move this over to here. I can see those little tears beginning to well up in your eyes. And see the little clenching in your throat seeing that I'm getting to play this a little early. Please no. If I had it any other way, I'd still choose this one where I'm getting to play it and you're not. I know that that might be hard to hear. That might be difficult to come to terms with the fact. 
I, I can see from the little snot bubble in your nose and the choke and phlegm build up in your throat. That it's an emotional time for you. But for me, it's a good time. Where are my houses? 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 Housing? I haven't unlocked housing? What? Ah, right. That's these reputation points. Golden Crosses will progress reset with 1.0 if I've played it before. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know why I sometimes say sure. I say sure if, if it's in agreement, but when it comes to like understanding, I'm just not sure. All right, who loves farming? Humans, humans love farming. All right. Oh, great, farm field. Great, 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 great. So we need to make woodcutters camps and some shelter. Do I need to unlock a house? Oh, a shelter, okay. So we right now have 11 residents, so I'm building four homes rather quickly. Let's go ahead and get some wood. Wood is good. Uh, yeah, I'll, I may as well build it over there. How much does this take? This costs 10 wood. I, I really need to pay attention how much building materials I have. I think this game smartly knows that I probably want these woodcutters champ or woodcutters camps built ASAP. Oh, I see it uses parts. This is kind of a clever way to make sure that I can't hose myself. Beavers. Beavers, beavers, beavers. Let's go ahead and have you just chew right through that. Let's go over here and can I do this? I can just go do do do. Then I can hit F and shift and go through. Mmm, he's a whiz. He's an absolute whiz. I can't believe it. He knows two to three hockeys. It's amazing. Ah. Build order is foolproof. Glad we're no fools. We're more than not fools. Are you kidding me? I'm the best against the storm player you've ever seen. Certainly in 1.0. Can we please finish these shelters? Please. Why would you not want all beaver woodcutters? Well, right now I have a grand total of three beavers. So all these, uh, all my beavers are currently jamming over here. I got a pair of hoonams over here. What's the difficulty we're playing at? Uh, we're playing at tutorial difficulty. Send nibs. And I know, I know you're seeing this insane play and like, wow, day nine, you're like the king of the underworld. You're so badass. But really, I'm following along with the tutorial of the game because I don't quite remember the mechanics, but I appreciate them. Yes, I, I, I'm the bourgeois of roguelike city builders. It's true. All right, so we now have this done. So we need to get a small trapper's camp and we need to get meat from our lizard pals. A barrel delivery, do you want five barrels per minute or plus 50% of the amount of goods produced in the small farm? I'm gonna do the barrels. I'm gonna do the barrels because I like having a distribution of resources in this game because I'm awful. <laughs> okay, I'll get the small trapper's camp. All right, it's time to get a small trapper's camp. No, oh my God, this farm. Oh no. Oh God, how do I, how do I, how do I bulldoze this? Is it like that, this? Wait a minute, oh! Oh my god, it fucking hurts! Hold on, do this, and how do I... Oh, where is it? Small Trapper's Camp. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, <laughs> shit. All right, destroy this. Scoot it over there. Build this. Could have seen this coming mean thing to say. Didn't have to say that. The way you said it was just, it was so mean. Clay deposit. What is this? Small encampment. 
All right, Weaver, Weaver, investigate. All right. All right, let's get let's get some lizards going here. I can alt and I can alt scroll through. There's my lizard pals. Get in there. Using this game is so incredibly chill. I love it. Yeah, for a game that is just a continuous, irredeemable stream of panic, <laughs> just an absolute jumbled crisis, one after the other. I think that the music in this is lovely, and I, I really love this aesthetic, where. This is an older school style of aesthetic that I, I think just a lot of games moved past, but it's still so effective. And the idea is if you look at this house, like if you look at the roof and these wood uh, beams that go across, earlier on in the development of games, there's this idea that you um, that was created that you would have a polygon that represented the, you know, I'm gonna get MS Paint. MS Paint. He's doing it. He's pulling out paint. You know, you'd have the idea of you'd have some shape like this rendered in three dimensions. And then, okay. Oh, don't unplug my stuff, darling. And then you would have some image, like you might have a flat brown wood looking thing here and you would slap it onto a corresponding location on this polygon. And so let me actually make this texture simpler if you do something like this. This allows you to maybe do something like this where you, because you're combining this image with this polygon plus some settings, like maybe you tile it like this or maybe you just match it one-to-one -one like that. So you have this sort of looking thing. And the idea of the image that goes onto the polygon, this is called a texture. And then this shape, you know, if you could even put this onto the top one, or let me do it on the front facing one because that's easier to illustrate. You could put it like here and it could like stretch across this. And so this became an incredibly effective way to just present stuff in 3D. Now, let's say that I was trying to have something like a barrel, like an actual circular barrel. Well, what a lot of games would do is they would kind of cheat and they'd make like something that looks a little bit like a cube. And then they would just kind of like have the texture, maybe have this sort of like, you know, brighter color here and here and then like a darker color texture here to kind of like give it the illusion that it has like some roundedness. Wow, this is, <laughs> you can tell I'm not a 3D artist. Um, but you, you would do things like you'd say, okay, this is a barrel and we're gonna make the texture, make it appear to be rounded, but this is as best that we can do. And then obviously as games got more and more powerful, you started to be able to add additional sides to these polygons. So you'd have this multi-sided polygon that still was not perfectly round. But hey, this is good. This is what you could do with this barrel. And in, in, in with some styles of art where you didn't have enough compute power, it was difficult to be able to uh, have a lot of polygons or have a lot of textures. Pitiless equations began to take hold and sacrifices must be made. And this is where some of the most brilliant art styles emerged. And a lot of early games used something like this, where you can see just in terms of the actual number of polygons on just this roof, there's not a lot. It's like what looks like a sort of rectangular long cube for each of these logs. And then this roof looks really flat but then the technique that artists would do is they would actually paint a really beautiful texture and paint shadows and gloss and stuff like this. So for instance, you see this little shine that's here on this piece of wood and here, notice that as I pan, 
the shine doesn't change. It is actually literally that color is painted on. This is different from how um, a lot of really realistic engines work where they will try to have light rays being simulated bouncing down off the roof. And if you're looking from this angle or this angle, the, the, the coloration looks different. And so this style was done in a lot of early 2000s games, most notably like World of Warcraft and Warcraft 3 it did a lot of stuff like this. A lot of N64 graphics looked a good bit like this, where again, the idea was that we're not gonna have that many polygons. We're not gonna have like a really rich 3D shape, but we're gonna have the absolute most beautiful painterly textures. And I really wanna stress when, when I say painterly, you are faking shadows by literally drawing the color black here, which is very different from light hitting an object and casting a shadow, which is what you can see right uh, here. You can see this little, it's kind of hard because my mouse cursor is turning green, but you can see next to our friend, size blood claw. You can see that just underneath him, you see he's casting a little tiny shadow. That's actually being rendered as he's moving around. You can see that underneath is, tail, you'll see that shadow. And so because we now have way higher fidelity machines, it doesn't change the fact that this art style of relatively low polygons with painted, beautiful textures on the outside, doesn't change the fact that it still looks great, that this looks unbelievable. Um, so because we have the ability to zoom out and actually see all these trees rendered individually, we can up the total cumulative amount of polygons and have much more complicated textures. I think that this was a really fantastic art style decision from the developers that I just think is really lovely. Oops, this is what I wanna do. Oh yeah, I just need to collect the meats. Actually, it looks marvelous. Like, you know, and, and what's nice is that you can scale up and down the usage of that tool as much as you, or of that technique as much as you want. You can see, for instance, with these plants, you see how right around the outside of the leaves and particularly where all the leaves of these shrubs meet near the base, it's very, very dark. And if you look, you will actually see that a lot of it is just literally that painted color as opposed to some really complex shadows being cast. But then something like this, this you know, this slick shell brood mother, this is actually a pretty high polygon model compared to something like some of the blockiness of these roofs. Roofs. Let's see, we got clay deposits. We got some meats, more clay. Flax fields, flax fields. Order's ready to complete. All right, newcomers. I'll, you know what, I'll get the lizards, the lizards and the leathers. All, this is the L shipment. So what do we want? We want a smokehouse to make jerky. Ah. Naval meat in the jerky recipe. Produce 20 jerky. Rewards, I get builder's packs, I get barrels, I get nets. Nets? Plus one to meat production? Oh, okay, okay. I was like, is this the icon that really communicates nets? So I actually want to move this, move here, move here. There we go. Unbottleneck that. <coughs> uh, what am I trying to do now? Oh yeah, build the smokehouse. All right, let's do some smokies. Unlock the smokehouse. Click this. Unlock the smokehouse. So I can absolutely trample over all these nutritious farmlands. Yeah, I'm doing that, man. I'm wrecking these. Absolutely flattening all life in there, man. Nothing's gonna grow here no more. Oh, what could have been? It's time to do a little bit of smokehouse, man. Confirm Sean hates farms. It's true. It's true. I hate farms. I hate seeds. <laughs> Everything about it. All in the name of the smokehouse. 
even the little bits of insects and fungus there. Absolute fungicide as we're trying to get ourselves a tasty little smokehouse for our lizards. It's all worth it. Oh, look at this. A double bonus. I love to eat meats and I love to make meats. This is like a dream being a lizard working here. Yeah, who cares about any of that stuff? We're making jerky. Smoked insects are delicious. Now, are you saying that as a lizard or are you just like saying that as like a conversation starter? Is there any verticality in the maps of this game? No, I don't think that there's some sort of like underworld region and overworld. I know that that's very in vogue right now. Once Elden Ring came out and everyone was just like, oh, Shifra, let's go to Shifra. Oh, the game is so good. Why am I not only playing Elden Ring my entire life? Why do I talk to any of you people? Wait, what's happening here? Oh, that's right. So, um, I don't have any insects, so I can't make insect jerky. Wow, B-Town Pro, your comment makes a lot of sense. I really went in at you about that. I shouldn't have done that. That's on me. Um, so I want to switch this to meat, and I can cook it with wood, or I can cook it with coal, but I'll cook it with wood, because as you can see, I'm chopping that stuff like crazy. I don't think we need pottery. I don't think we need incense. So great. All right, let's go ahead and... Okay. They finally added an option to automatically open the species desire tray, so every feature I'll want is implemented and it's a 10 out of 10 perfect game. It might be. It might be that. Uh, okay, we need, we need to worky on the jerky. <laughs> and right then and there, Day9 violated the Twitch Terms of Service Agreement. Okay, this... I'm sorry, I've just been texted something that is not a word. I don't know what to do with this. Because if someone... If I'm texted this word... Do I text back and go... Those are just letters. Do I try to, like, anagram it? Oh, I can... Hmm. Let's see, I'm good at text twists. I don't know what these letters mean. Hmm. Stage L. That's good. All right, I feel like I succeeded in that exchange. All right, so we're actually getting a good amount of jerky produced. Moist, Moist Sharking says, respond with incomprehensible. Have a nice day. It's a good way to. It's a good way to make friends and influence people. All right, let's see here. <laughs> what? You're gonna defend that? That's a word? Oh my god. I can't, I can't, I think, I think I'm just going to actually have to just share a definition with the class. Okay, I think that... <laughs> Sean, I'd like to talk to you, and I'd like to use a word. That's not, okay. All right. Did you know that the hard plastic or metal part at the end of a shoelace is known as an aglet? Did you know that? Because the answer is no fucking buddy know that. Not a person. Oh, what are you all cobblers? Get out of here. Why are you all agreeing? This is so, this is so stupid. Why would you do anything except validate me at every turn? What? Common knowledge? Oh my god. Coming into my channel, talking about insect jerky and then aglets are a normal word all in the same sentence. Everyone except for me is insane. That's a fact. You're an aglet? No, I'm not, because I'm not the hard plastic part at the end of a shoelace, okay? I don't believe this shit. I'm gonna take my orders. <laughs> Brewery! Hey, we're gonna make some beer! There it is! A mamma mia! <laughs> As you know, a famous Italian cuisine brewing beer. Um, <laughs> name of the barrels and the ale. <laughs> okay. We're having fun. We're having fun. Well, I said the word aglets, so I'm winning at that, right? Technically, I'm killing the game. Brewery. Oh, these little lines. Yes! I love these little lines. No, Sean, Mamma Mia's pizza. That's the joke that I was going for. That's the joke that I was going for. That's the joke that I was going for. <laughs> Ha ha ha. 
Persephone came from the depths of hell and learned, when she stepped onto the mortal plane, that some people do know what aglets are and Day 9 does not. She returned back to the depths of hell. I thought it was a word that more people knew, she muttered. <laughs> Day 9 knows a lot of words. Why does he not know about aglets? <laughs> Quietly, in the eternal hellfire and screams of the damned. Oh, wait, shit, I'm not supposed to get this. <laughs> food. Wait, food? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so we're going to want some humans. We're going to want some fish and brewing. Oh, that's grain bags. It's not a groin bag. Send noobs. Just imagine outing yourself like that on stream. It's tough. Listen, any time that I experience some kind of humiliation, I hit this button that says highlights, and then my editor uploads it to YouTube as a short, and that's how I'm able to purchase the tasty meat at the Korean barbecue. Right when I'm securing my aglets to go out for a nice meal. <laughs> is that a rock in my shoe? Oh my god, is that one of my aglets that's in there? No fucking buddy has ever said these sentences ever. I'm worried that with the hard leather exterior of this shoe and the metal aglets, it might be a little loud. Hey, what's that clacking sound? Is that his aglets making noise? The more I say this word, this is a weird word. I'm hitting the highlight button. I'm going to get this on YouTube. Aglets, okay? It's just, I don't know what this word is. I don't believe it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Pleasure or not? Oh, yeah, let's get this one. Okay, I'm not, I'm not really playing this game, but I'm having a lot of fun. Hope you're having fun, too. Alright, the brewery. Who likes to brew? Humans do. Humans. Yes, yes. One paw on me. That's good. It's fun to say. I think aglets ranks very highly as words that rapidly lose meaning the more you say it. What are you doing? Ouch! Ah! Alright, she's in the lap. Alright, what a good cat. Okay, so I need to build the brewery, which I think is over... Smokehouse? No. Um, brewery. Dude, I, the, my placement. Let me tell you something. <laughs> it's, 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 it's terrible. I'm so bad at making this city. You know what? Everyone needs to walk when they want to go to the brewery. Okay, there is no good connections. There's not enough homes. I have homes for 12. I have 21 people. I'm being, I'm being really bad. All right. Um. So let's see. We'll need seven. Seven from heaven. I'm gonna make eight. Nine, because that's great for branding. Why do you need a second brewery? I don't have a second brewery. What the fuck? What in the fuck? Oh my god! There's only 21 people and we have two breweries? I don't remember building that ever! But then I also said humans love brewing, and then I got distracted again. I built a second brewery. I feel I'm still the best player at 1.0 because. I'm the only one who has access until Friday, so, you know, we can take that. But still, how embarrassing, man. What do you have to eat in your place? Well, you can get jerky. You can get beer. You can also get beer. Outside of that, you have raw plants, and those are your options. Yes, uh, it's a little bit tough on the diet. Uh, from Stasis Bone Totem yesterday, you might know that this can cause proctoheliosis. <laughs> um, and if it's a term that you've never heard of before, you know, get yourself a dictionary. Work your way from there. All right. Uh, I, need to, I need to just stop this. How do I deactivate this? Destroy this. Yes. That's going to be a hell on the sewerage system. Now, you're talking, are you talking about the sewer system of the city or of the citizens? Okay, so let's do this. No, get me out of deconstruction mode. Okay, so what what am I doing? I'm having a great time. What are we trying to do? Uh, barrels and ale. Perfect. So this is ale. So we need to turn off these. And we need to say that we want to take the barrels. Because we're getting a whole bunch of those. And as for the grain, yeah, we want to have grain in there. Oh, shit. There we go. Grain. Woo-wee, that was close. So now you get the ale of brewing. This is fun. Arclysis, what am I doing story in my life? 
Oh my god. Persephone, any word you wish to ask for is valid. Tasteless stone totem is always a good time. I prefer the stasis bone totem. Yes, Charlie Mac. I'm a smart bear now. Alright, so yeah, m major buildings like the brewery can't be moved around, but things like this woodcutter's camp can. So in fact, I'll actually just scoop this thing over here and start chopping. Like this. Do I actually want to chop into the dangerous glade? I mean, I may as well. You're a very smart bear, my Sean. Thank you, my Andrew Bull7. <laughs> oh. Okay. This is the game. Uh, what do I need to do? So, so, so these lizards... Got some jerky. They could use some skewers. Can we make skewers? Or is that in, like, a metery or something? How am I going to make barrels? Well, I think that I have that... thing that gives me barrels per... How, don't, I, don't I just get barrels per period of time or some, something? Don't I just get barrels per period? Don't I just... Bottom right shows me what perk I have? Or you mean bottom left? There it is! Five barrels per minute. Five! We even have an emote for five! To Warspus, that was my bad. No, it's okay. I could mirror it. I could flop this screen around. Can I do this? Uh, is there a mirror? I mean... I mean, I, I, I can do this, actually. I can just... Whoa! Where, where did it go? Why? What is... <laughs> oh, my God! It, it, it's... Oh, my God. We're having, oh, God. It's some extreme against the storm. Did you see Daynight Stream yesterday? I was worried about him. He seemed pretty tilted. Oh, man. Ow! Okay. <laughs> yes, it's a Dutch angle stream. Hold on. I just... You know what? Stop looking. Stop watching the stream. Don't don't watch my content. Whatever you do. I know. I know you can't turn away, though. I know seeing streamers make mistakes. Oh, oh, that must have been embarrassing for him. I know what Twitch chat is like. Let me tell you a little bit about the bottom of the ocean floor where you live. So, way down at the bottom of the ocean, there's an entire ecosystem where dead shit falls to the bottom. Little polychaete worms are there just going, ah, just waiting for the corpses of others to fall into their mouths, okay? And you are just sitting at your computer waiting for me to make mistakes in a video game or with production or with something I said, and then you're like, oh, he messed up. Nom, nom, nom. You start typing it to me. I know how you work. I know what this little army of you is looking like. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, but I want to let you know I love you little sea-dwelling worms. This is beyond low-hanging fruit, huh? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, I see what you mean. No, I see what you mean. Yes, yes, sir. Raffle Pidgey says you don't choose what you love. <laughs> That's true. You're, you just, you just, you don't even have eyes. You're just all done. Ah. <laughs> that just falls in. You're like, mm, this is my favorite food. <laughs> Best friend F says the fruit is so low hanging it got all over my aglets. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. I like saying stupid words, it's making the day better. Oh my god, from the depths of hell, she came up and said, You must say Polly Keat Worm now. But wait, I just learned about aglets. You will never learn enough, mortal. Okay? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, tavern. Place where villagers can fulfill their need for leisure and luxury. Passive effects, Gleeman's Tales. All right, let's, let's unlock some stuff. All right. 
Tavern. Uh, should I build the tavern where my former second brewery used to be? I don't know. That seems to make enough sense to me. And this is collectible by... Stonecutter's Camp. Great. So I could... Do I have a Stonecutter's Camp? Hell yeah, brother. What? What? Oh my god! Oh my god, it's a break dancing vat of gangrene. All right, threats. What happens here in 12 minutes? Toxic substance of unknown origin destroys all planted crops and farm fields. Mamma mia. Okay. Food tastes terrible due to contaminants from leaking cauldron. Ah! Okay, what do I need to do? Burn down, which costs oil, or do I want to fix? which takes barrels, which I have infinity of. <coughs> <coughs> so I need a smithy, carpenter, fine smith, tool shop. Do I have any of those? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Ah. Oh, no. Dude, it is still so hot in this back room. How's one point of looking? Been a while since I played this. Pieces of my art. It's great. It's just really good. Sorry, it's a little hot in here because you're all very funny. <laughs> Exposure to the cauldron causes aglets. Watch out. No, that's the thing. Aglets sound like it's like a growth. Like I went to the doctor and I got my aglets removed, right? Like it just sounds, there's something that just doesn't sound like a shoelace related thing. You know what I mean? I feel like it shouldn't have a name. It should just be the end of the shoelace, that's what it should be called. All right, so let me see here. So this, so I have like a billion and one barrels. Can I fix it with something else? I can fix it with parts, oh yeah. I shall send in the beavers. Isn't it pronounced eyelets? What? You're gonna come into my channel and tell me that something that is A G L E T is pronounced eyelets? Those are the holes that the aglets go through. <laughs> and now I understand why the word's helpful, and also why aglets are helpful. I still fucking hate that this word is real. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, Taurus, but I want to hold the power button on my computer and just turn it off and be like, well, honey, I had to end the stream early. The internet came for me today. Like, <laughs> it's pronounced eyeless. I don't believe it. Ben Avery says we're losing our minds live on stream today. It's finally happening. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. It's true. All right. No, I know. I mean, even, 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 even Persephone from the depths of hell is like that's not. It's not pronounced like that. <laughs> yeah, it's happening over this very, very calming, gentle. Like you will build a colony of beavers, humans, and lizards to gentle tunes in the rain, and I'm like screaming at you about why I think shoelace parts aren't real. Like I'm like I have a superstition about something that does not matter. Even even superstitious people are like that guy's weird. Like flat earthers are like, yeah, Sean believes crazy shit. Like, <laughs> I don't seem to really mess him up. Who do we get more of? Hmm, we get some humans. We get some eggs from this. Rit Ritz. Except this. I I've. I mean, I'll be honest, I've been having a very fun time playing this game. And this is what we're also going to do tomorrow. This is also what we should really do every day. Vice Crimes, you're arguing against your chat, which is a known demographic of shoe cobblers, no less. I wish you were shoe cobblers, then your hands would be occupied and wouldn't have to see you type all this nonsense to me all day. My God! I worry about myself. I worry about myself greatly. Okay. So let's see here. So we have the tavern... So we are currently waiting on the fabrics that we are not making. So that means that I need to actually use my brain. 
So we should have some sort of, let's see here, this is housing, this is production crude workstation. So we absolutely need to smash this down here first. This is, this is super high priority. Get the wood and then we need to make some fabrics. Right. <clears throat> This blend out, says the game has an enormous quality to popularity ratio. What does that mean? What does that mean? That that sounds like an underhanded insult, you know? It means for how very good it is, I hear almost nothing about it. Ah. Ah. Yeah. I'll have the beaver and the lizard working in there together. It seems like a good plan. I mean, I think that, like, I don't know. Let me actually check Steam charts on this really fast. Against the. Let me look up against the, because I don't want to type in the storm. <laughs> against the storm. Let's take a peek. 1,500 players. Dude. So many more people should be playing this game. You're right. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. Okay, so this is the stone cutters camp. Whoopsie daisies, I forgot. Um, humans love to collect stones. So here I'm trying to produce the fabrics using uh, leathers or plant fiber. I mean, probably, probably plant fiber is fine. And then that way I can get enough fabrics and I still need a little bit more plank. So I'm going to go back to the crude workshop and also enable plank production. So now, let, let's see if the pot of gangrene is doing its thing. Let's see if it's didgeridooing it. It's working it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Break it down. Work it. Yeah, I think that this game has come in extraordinary ways in terms of just being able to clearly present how it functions, what the gameplay is. I think it's been pretty marvelous, to be honest. Do I want to build a road here, or do I just want people to walk? Yeah, I... I, I hate when my workers are comfortable. What goes the dance that I did for StarCraft? I mean, the Fusion Core dance? Alright, hold on, I gotta... I gotta, I gotta clear this. My phone is, is blowing up. Absolutely blowing up. Because I'm so popular. And also, often I get a lot of texts that are like, your auto payment went through for the thing that you never remember. Okay. All right, very fine. Flaxfield, large. What collects this harvester's camp? Let's make a harvester's camp. Why wouldn't we? But up, up, up. Best friend, I'm not a huge fan of city builders in general, but starting the game always feels so overwhelming. I love the idea of carving out the map via chopping trees to give you achievable goals. Yeah, and right as you're starting to get overwhelmed, you win. It's amazing. Small Trapper's Camp has no nearby deposits. Can it go over here? Path. Path. It's a path. Right through the farm. Rotato. Potato. Path. I think it's great. Sharpie says, actually, looking into there's a difference. Aglets are functional, like on shoelaces, where eyelets are generally decorative, like on military tassels. I'm in too deep. Yeah, no, let me tell you, you're going to be like calling a loved one tonight and be like, dude, we got into this big debate on aglets. And the very first words out of their mouth is going to be, that's not a real word. And that's how you know when you've gone way too deep. That's not a thing. All right, great. Yo, we got the tavern boo. Oh, need for leisure. Quickly, leisure, everybody. Luxury, everybody. Every evening, the Glee Man tells stories about past glories and times before the Great Civil War. Plus three to global resolve. Oh. Beavers? 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 Actually, let me let me do some rearrangement here. Oh my god, the woodcutter's camp has three fucking human beings in it? No! A beaver! 
Be, be gone, be gone. Get back over here to the tavern. Beavers, out. Oh my god, these poor beavers. All they ever wanted to do... They just wanted to cut wood. Here I am. Fucking jamming them right into the tavern. How embarrassing. <clears throat> How are you enjoying the new Ixalan set? I'm biased because big dinosaurs are awesome. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's incredible. Plus two to meat production, gain additional meat every yield. Yeah. We've got the meats. <laughs> I'm YouTube videos, Fusion Core video. I used to watch every Friday. Yes, Kiazak. Because as long as you're linking me and my channel while asking for permission, you're allowed. All right. Oh, look at this. We have some more. Wait, wait, wait. Where'd my guy go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? He's gone. He's, he just peaced out. He's no, oh, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Let's see what's over here. Medium abandoned cash. Do I break open or do I want to send to the citadel? Oh, I want to do this. And I should have enough tools, right? Oh, shit. Guess what, beaver? Be gone. Crude workstation? I probably don't need... That guy there. Let's actually get some. Oh, not not you. We're going over here, and we're gonna assign a lizard. We're gonna assign a beaver. So I have. Where does it tell me how many tools I have? Wait a minute. So in this interface. So is it that thing in the top right? I think it is. It says 30. I think so. Let's take a peek. So that's my food. This is my building materials. This is my stuff. What is this? Crafting resources? Fuel and exploration. Ah, tools. Ah. Ah! The worst is I'm going between this stream and a different one. We're still talking about aglets. Yeah. No, I'm never letting this go. It's become quite the chat kerfuffle where I'm on one side and it seems like everyone else who somehow knows this fucking word is on the other. And those are pretty equal, especially given that I'm the one with the microphone and you're not. All right, what's over here? Oh yeah, give me this. What? Oh, are we out of meats? All right, um, quickly, investigate. Ham loves hash browns. Is actually March twenty third is Aglet Awareness Day. I celebrate it every year. What I do is I go to all of my shoes, go to the end of the shoelaces to the thing that's there. It's an aglet. We all know that. I I remove it. I remove its little foreskin, and then I put a new one on there in celebration of Aglet Awareness Day. I, I I love the idea of Aglet Awareness would be going up to someone like, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, excuse me. Do you know what an Aglet is? No. Look at this dictionary, ma'am. And let me, ma'am, 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 look at, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. This is my, ma'am, look at my shoes, ma'am. Look at my shoes. Stop looking at my shoes. Look at the shoelaces, you're doing great. Ma'am, look at the end of my shoelaces. Congratulations. You've been made aware, ma'am. <laughs> oh my god. Best friend F says, Too true, Sean, is my granddad used to say. <laughs> It's like Granddad used to say, you can't swap the right aglet with the left eyelet and call it tied. That's something my grandma used to say too. I mean <laughs> Why is this so funny? 
Oh my god. Oh fuck, I'm sweating. You know, that and the last joke were both from the same person, right? It's best friend Ev. Oh my god. Yeah, I got I got a new BF right here, man. Let me tell you. You're killing it. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. I cannot believe Aglet is delivering so hard. This goof-ass word. Oh wait, choose a blueprint. I need to try to win this game. A lizard house? A beaver house? A human house? What do I have the most of? Nine, eight, and eight. But, yeah, sure, I think humans are alright. Human house, human house. Things are great in the human house. What am I getting from here? I'm getting... Insects? Alright, I'll change the recipe. I guess. The recipe, I guess a pee. Oh, that's funny, thanks, JTS is me. Oh my god. A new copy pasta just dropped. This has been an insanely fun stream, and I think it is at least 80% because of the word aglet. Um, humans. So I'm going to need some more houses. 13, that's going to be 5 total human houses. Burp, burp, burp. Move. There. Just... It. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> This is an early access to 1.0. I'm not seeing it out on Steam. I have extra special Day9 is a big boy on Twitch power. And so they were like, oh, Day9, you're such a big boy. Why don't you play on this game early? And I was like, make me. And then they just gave me a key, and I immediately said I was going to stream it on Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, order's ready to complete. And I think, I think that'll actually, oops, win it for us to do this. Oh, my God. Oh my god, yeah, the houses are too far away from a hearth, that's right. You've unlocked all this stuff. Mine, Herbalist Camp Rain Collector. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, the Queen's Envoy. The world is vast, ever-changing place because it's a roguelike. And at its heart lies the smoldering city. Oh, I gotta click this. Tutorial 2 Town. Enter the smoldering city and use the resources you've gathered so far to buy the Obsidian Archive Level 1 upgrade, he said. In a non-gamey sort of way. Okay, I'll go ahead and buy upgrades. Obsidian Archive. Gain a permanent minus 2% to the speed at which the Queen's impatience grows. Unlock. Let's look an upgrade to preview. Permanent minus two, or permanent 2% reduction of fuel consumption at hearths. Uh, I guess this. Hey, look at my little, oh dude, I forgot about this screen. This is so Heroes of Might and Magic 2, dude. It is so Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Fire Skanks says my grandpa was from Tutorial 2 Town. Good to hear. How is he? How's he doing? Has he figured out the basics yet? Oh, man. Send noobs. They're really just like minus 2% in games. Just too small to mean anything for the player to feel. Yeah, I think it's dog shit. <laughs> so I've made this point on previous streams that I think when it comes to design, there is a tier of feelability, which is a very absolutely robust, well-defined word that I'm not going to define for you, but you should actually still just vaguely agree with me that feelability is a thing. Just let me say my point. I think that if you have in order, or if you if you give a player something, like a different option, or a different access, or a different bonus, or a number change, it doesn't matter if in a spreadsheet it computationally bakes out that it matters. A player needs to feel it. So, for instance, if you have a fire bolt and a frost bolt, and they both do the same damage, except these enemies are weak to frost bolt, and it's plus 2% damage with your frost bolt. It's hard to feel the impact of it. Yes, computationally, if you're killing thousands of enemies, you will have killed, you know, tens more as a result of this. But in order of feelability, I think it goes binary, 
discrete, continuous. As in binary things are easy to feel, such as, I couldn't equip the plate mail, now I can equip the plate mail. Or I couldn't equip my amazing um, 50 strength sword in Elden Ring until I hit 50 strength and now I can equip it. There's that change. When I unlock a building in this game, that is a uh, binary. Where I didn't have it, I do have it. Um, or I haven't opened the glade, now I have opened the glade. I think the next thing that is feelable is when there is something discrete, like going from level three to four, where there's an actual, um, a, a number that changes in a whole number sort of way. Um, or, uh, what are some good examples of this? Uh, I mean, frankly, discrete still connects to that idea of binary. I mean, some people would just say I'm being a little semantic at that point, but you know, maybe last hitting in Dota is a good example. It's very chunky to get a last hit, get a last hit, miss a last hit, get a last hit, miss one, miss one, get one, get one. Each of these feels like a discrete moment where there is a success or failure case but it's not necessarily binary in that last hitting is happening across the entire game, but each event is discrete. Continuous things are very hard to feel, and that would be something like I have gone from 26 workers in StarCraft to 28 workers in StarCraft. Yes, technically I am intellectually getting more income as a result, but it's hard to feel. You can feel it on a, uh, you can feel continuous change on a large enough scale. So for instance, when you go from 16 workers in StarCraft to 66 workers, you're like, wow, I have, I'm drowning in money. It's hard to keep up with my spending rate. So, um, Lost Alliance is last hitting and binary, is binary and Dota, the gold is continuous. Uh, I, that is not, that is incorrect with respect to how I am providing this definition. Um, I am just trying to note the idea that when there are chunky moments in games, those are more emotionally exciting to people than the tiny little tweaks that can happen at a small continuous scale in aggregate. And so I think that th this is one of the reasons why I just don't like seeing in a game my, or plus 2% damage, plus 4% armor, plus 3% damage, you know, these kinds of things. Um, Now, the thing is that I don't think that you only want maximum feelability on everything. For instance, in um, Dota and League of Legends, as you level up, you just gain health. You just gain health and gain damage on sort of just like, like a scale. And it is fun, just like it is fun in StarCraft to feel how many workers you have with 70 versus when you had 12 at the start of the game. It is fun to feel the difference between those moments even though it was very hard at each step to feel each step occurring, the aggregate is fun. Having a lot of health at the end of a game of Dota is fun. If I am way over leveled, I just ha I'm hard for my opponents to kill. Um, so I think the, um, I think that when you have things like the combination of, oh, I'm getting levels, which are these discrete chunks. Oh, I unlocked my ultimate, which is a binary moment. When I complete an item, it's like a binary moment, maybe arguably a discrete moment, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's sort of like the, the gist of what I'm trying to say, I feel like is important. I've played a lot of games where you have choice and strategy and decision-making, and over the course of the game, the net effect of everything is like, a little choice here, a little choice here, a little choice here, just a little choice, little choice, little choice, little choice, and you're just making tons of these things that are impossible to really get a sense of until you have played enough to understand the difference between the two. I like when games do something like what this game does, where when you level up, here's three buildings, pick one. I pick one, and now I'm kind of stuck with that and I can feel what I'm unable to do. I can feel what I'm able to do. I'm, I can feel what I can kind of do ineffectively. Oh, goodness. Dude, I've been laughing hard today. Oh. Hmm, all right. Uh, so is deeds how I go to missions? Ah, no, deeds are the quests. Finish your first game after tutorial. Yeah, I don't care about any of these things. All right, so I'm just gonna leave. 
and the bird's gonna be like, Caw -caw! Go to the next area. This world is governed by the eternal Blightstorm cycle. It is almost upon us, so no caravans are allowed to embark. Press the button in the lower right corner of the screen to finish the cycle. Snake, press the action button. All right, what is it? Is it behind me here? Is this it? LMB to end the current cycle. End the cycle. Break the cycle. Dude, that looks great. <coughs> Ouch. Ow. Your goal is, Viceroy, is to reach the ancient seals of your caravan and reforge them, pushing back the Blightstorm. Kaka! You're almost ready to venture out on your own. Choose any map tile inside your embarkation range to begin. The map is so... Oh, this map is so big. I mean, I'm gonna go south towards towards this one. Because I can. Royal Outpost. So I'll do this. To embark, you must first choose a caravan that will become the foundation of your town's population. Oh, that's right. I love beavers. I will choose the beavers. All right. Next, choose a difficulty. The higher the risk, the greater the reward. Uh-oh. But beware, an experienced Viceroy won't last long on higher difficulties. Is it Viceroy or Viceroy? Because they say Viceroy, but I think it's... I think it's pronounced Aglets, is what I think. You know what I mean? Viceroy? Vasty, all your embarkation points to take extra goods with you. You are finally ready to embark on your own. Remember, there is always a way out. Alright, may the storm be gentle on you, Viceroy. Alright, so I guess I'll get... I think I'll get to be this. Uh... Is this embarkation points? Okay, so let me do some stone. And then I will get some eggs. I already have some eggs here. I guess I get some. Is this fiber or is this root? Difficulty settlers. More reputation required to win. Blight rot and corruption. And locked. I'm, I'm going to do. I'm gonna do Pioneer, and I'm gonna pause a little bit. <laughs> dude, yeah, dude, this this part, I, I have not even begun to think about at all. Like, I, I remember hitting this in the previous games and being like, ooh, I have no idea what I want, because I'm looking over here and it's like, would you like stone to construct advanced buildings right from the get-go, or would you like five snickerdoodles? And I'm like, oh, I think a snickerdoodle is very tasty. I'll have five of those, please. I like start, immediately eight seconds in, all the snickerdoodles are gone, and I'm like, oh my, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I have played some of the game. Roter er Jango. You name your settlement? I do. Name your settlement. Um, <laughs> Aglatown. Hmm? Embark. How could I not? How could I not? I'm not not going to do that. It isn't the case that I won't and I wouldn't. Um, okay, so let's see here. Additional effects. Yeah, this is the one part of the game that I wish it just waited a little bit to dump upon me as a new player. I mean, I know that I'm a returning player, but still just let me speak. I want to be heard and be seen. Um, these kinds of like forest mysteries and bonus things, I, I think are a bit of an issue for me to like wrap my head around. Proximity to the Royal Outpost makes it easier to communicate with the crown. Marshlands are gathered, to, are gathered's paradise. Gathering speed is increased by 10% for every two workers. The marshlands are home to enormous life forms. Giant resource nodes can be found in forbidden glades. Each glade will have a different one. Ah, okay. Okay. 
and what, what is this? You know what? I don't. I just. I don't give a shit. <laughs> All right. What do I? Oh my god! Get me out of here. What are my? Oh my god! Get me. Oh my god! Unlock consumption scroll by buying. Oh my god! I need orders. I'm so glad this game has a pause. Okay. Am I actually fully surrounded by these? Yo, what? Is there like nothing but big bad glades? Forbidden glades. All right. It's tough living in Beaverton. All right, we have eight beavers. Candelievers. Okay. Um, let's take a peek at what our resources are. I have mushrooms. And is this stone deposits? And I have some stone. So, Breakyard can produce that. Can use clearance water. Top t-shirt and top game. Have fun, Sean. Thanks, Paul Forsaken. Spending one mission and the run. I don't know how this game works, Tangerine. I wouldn't trust me. You know, people like clothes. But I'm going to make a brickyard. Uh, small farm herb garden. Can gather large and giant resource nodes in addition to small ones. I want to do that because it said that this is one of the properties of this area, right? There is right here. Home to enormous life forms. Giant resources can be found in forbidden glades. Okay, so I guess we'll do that. I, I guess we will. I guess we will do that shit. Trapper's camp. Rain mill? Like, dude, I don't know how rain works in this game. It's insane. But the bakery makes biscuits? Dude, everybody loves biscuits and pie so much. But a clothier can make clothes, water skins, scrolls. I mean, uh, I'm going to do this one because I assume that we're going to, if there's going to be a lot of giant resource nodes, I assume that we'll be in a situation where we want to trap stuff. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and get some wood cutting. I remember also kind of feeling similarly to before uh, when I was doing this. Dude, I'm instantly cutting into this dangerous glade. I-D-G-A-F. <laughs> I have never and will never care. Mm-hmm. Dude, this just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Look at how good that shit looks. Look at that horse. Oh, oh, God. I need to make some green tea. But, dude, I, I don't know about you, but, like, I, we have an electric tea kettle. And when I turn that thing on, it's it's dangerous. Like, it heats the water up so fast. Oh, my God. It, it, it like, I mean, it's, I every time it goes on, like, I am worried. So this needs a small herbalist camp, which I have right here, right now. Uh, and then we want some beaver houses. Yeah, all right, I'm just gonna unpause. I'm gonna finish making some shelters. Shall build a path. All right, so we're gonna do this and we're cutting into the glades. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my T turned on. Okay, everyone, stay here. Stay here.
I didn't assign any woodcutters. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Put the beavers in the wood, man. Ugh. Oh, what a disaster. God, I thought I was really cool. Don't I? Don't, I'm supposed to have eight of these. Oh, the ancient hearth needs to be manned by a beaver. I'm never leaving here again. I'm never doing that. I'm staying here forever. Choose a cornerstone. Yo, dude, there's like so much stuff happening here. Roots per minute. I like that. Just the right amount. Villagers with leisure need to fill up 25 percent chance of doubling their yields. Don't care. Give me the roots. I don't want anyone to be happier than that. Choose an order. Okay. Okay, so if I build some paths, I do some good stuff. Great. Build materials packed for delivery. Ah, so I can't make that yet. Complete any one glade event. Dude, I'm just going to make 35 paths. That is very easy. I'm already at 23 out of 35. Oh my god, you're going to know that I live in a room and not inside of the game. Done! Uh, what is this? Cut through the forts to discover two glades. Easy. This one, um, Trapper's Camp. So I, I have this and deliver 25 meats. Yeah, so th this is good. This is what I have. Did against Storm get to 1.0? It does on Friday. So then we can unlock more quests, but this seems like a good collection of stuff to do. So I'm going to... I'm gonna make a little roundabouty thing here. Mm -hmm. Why not? I'll just build that there. Cause this, how many did it need more? 12 more? Wow, I'm such an overachiever. And what is this? So this is an obelisk. And I can tear it down. What does the offering do? The symbols, card, monument. Some says force corruption decreases hostility. Oh yeah, there, there's all these other meters. Yeah, may as well. I don't have anything here. Okay, tear it down. Yeah, I'll probably do this. And then I'll probably unassign some of the workers here to do this. And orders, recipe panel. Okay. Seamus says, uh, Sean, I'm sure you've been asked plenty, but you've been following Stormgate at all? Yeah. I mean, I saw this morning, I saw that Grubby was streaming it, but when I tuned in, he was having connection errors for like an hour. What is it? What has it been like? How's it been? I'm super curious what it's going to look like. So I'm going to build the trapper's camp here to start the other trapper's camp and meet. All right, so. So, I mean, I guess I'll just put it here. Uh, and I guess I'll just jam this way over here. Why not? Uh, erm, uh, duh. I don't even think I need any guys here. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little path over there. There's still an NDA for beta testers. Well, let me put it like this. For those of you that have literally watched it on Twitch, what did it look like? So I think I'm just going to tear this down for resources early on. Because I just think these resources seem good than decreasing the hostility. Whatever that does. I love, I love looking at my little guys go. Love looking at my little guys go. Now, while the little little turkeys are going, once again, I'm pretty pretty pleased that I've been on my uh, going to the gym, eating healthy, and then also um, what was I saying? There's still an NDA for random Twitch viewers. It's so funny, Crumple Zone. I'm, I'm trying to talk and read at the same time, which is impossible. Uh-oh. So let's make sure nothing bad's gonna happen. Okay, in 12 minutes, this horrible thing is going to occur. 
Old rain punk machinery left unsupervised. What? Unstable rainwater fumes fill the area. Oh, I have a lumber mill. Yes. I don't have planks or bricks, but I can make those with a crude workshop and with what were the two things that I got? A clothier and a brickyard? Yes. Oh my god, yes. <coughs> Hey, look, and here's a huge deposit. This is great. Snake and as large. I'm actually going to... Yeah, I disabled that woodcutter's camp. Okay, so I'm actually going to, like, stop chopping the wood. Because if I actually go to the... Where's my fuel? Where's my, like, basic... Oh, I'm actually super out of wood. Okay. So let me, let me focus on this game for just a second. I'm going to set up my next queue of orders. I want these guys to chop here. Just clear out this area. That's the first thing that I want to do. Um, my paths are slowly being constructed. And right now, I think I have... Pull, I want to pull a guy off this. So I have two builders. So I'm going to get the path completed. I also should absolutely... complete this order because I did clear the two glades. Excellent. I've leveled up. Foragers allows you to gather large and giant resource nodes in addition to small ones. I, I kind of I kind of think I'm just going to get this because this map has claimed there's going to be large nodes everywhere. So I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So, so yeah, this is what I do. I'm going to unpause and I'm going to let this finish and I'm going to assign a single beaver to it. I have a single beaver here. And um, I do have to be careful about this. So I apparently, I don't have any of that, I guess. So I can fix this. I don't have barrels. Okay. Okay, so here is, here is, oh yeah, there's huge weed fields. All right, whoopsie daisies. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I have these tasks here that I need to finish. I have the houses that I need to finish to absolutely please the beavers. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna let these ones finish. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this lumber yard up and running because I can make planks with a crude workshop I can make bricks with my clay house that I created. And then this will give me this lumber mill. With this lumber mill, what I can do is I can take these tools that I already have, or I might even just take wildfire essence. Why not? Who cares? Might even use parts. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that I have lots of different alternative substitutes for this resource. This either requires pottery. Oh, I can just make that in the brickyard. Great, I can then, I can skip over all this stuff. Okay, cool. So the reason that I want to get this lumber yard up is because this fuming machinery, oh, do they require the same set of stuff? Oh my God, wait, 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 wait. Okay, change of plans. Step one, let all my things finish. Step two, get a brickyard up and start absolutely blasting through <coughs> clay pot production and so on to allow me to fix this fuming machinery. Because I have 12 minutes to be able to fix this before everything goes awry. And I think that's great. Uh, so let's go ahead and just make myself my, I think it's over here in my brickyard. It's a brick. I will do like this. And what I want to do is I want to make these pots. Okay, what the heck were we talking about? We're, what, what on earth were we talking about? Do I need to hit investigate? Jesus, Louises. <laughs> Aglets, Stormgate, Aglets. <laughs> In that order. Oh my god. I refuse to remember a thing. No, that's, that's exactly how I get through life. 
how aglets will impact the meta of Stormgate. Well, I'm sure the aglet fa faction will be a significant contributor. All right, we, we built the 35 pass, so we get this other basic progress pip. Uh, what else do I want to do? Coal, bricks, jerky. We already... We're not worried about getting more bricks. Smokehouse for jerky, pottery, and incense. Uh, or provisioner. Flour, barrels, and packs of provisions. I don't really know how to evaluate these, so I'm just going to pick the smokehouse because I like meat. Oh, oh, oh. And my. And my. And my. Let's not forget. My tea should be ready. Okay, hold on. Everyone stay here. And before I go, give me. I don't believe it. <laughs> the tea was empty. I turned on the electric tea kettle, but there wasn't water in there. Uh, and so, as a result, I uh, have a very hot teapot, and that's about it. So I have two builders. Right. So your house is gone? Yeah, no, it's scary. It's scary. There was a little tea in there. I was able to fill, but a thimble's worth of tea. And I had one very delectable green tea, like a little health shot kind of looking thing. He's a real influencer. He made a bunch of hot air. Ouch, Dark Thread. Ouch, that was really good. But man, fuck you, dude. Oh, that was a killer joke. Oh, as in it's killing me. Oh my God. Damn, hold on. A highlight, hit that one. Oh. <laughs> There's still a bit of house just peeking in. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna. All right. I like I like being live rated. All right. So this this guy, he's just bonking. He's just tearing it down. Cool. Yeah, you, you just gotta deal with that reality for a second. See, it was just a second. God, I, I have I have a whole whole set of opinions around tea. I'm gonna be sharing soon. Everyone's over here having some snacks. This is the radius of the heart. Yeah, the heart. Yeah, I gotta be a little bit more central with my beaver buildings. You know, saved. So I can get this built. I can begin to collect these snake nests. I can get this. And this uh, taken up. I would love to get some more lizards. These unlock in four minutes. Trade routes. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Dana, don't keep us waiting. Spill the tea. Ho oh, ha ho oh, oh. ha. It's dangerous. You gotta be careful, man. Tea is. Shit is scary. Electric tea kettle will absolutely cook you. So, I mean, we are slowly working towards getting everything up and running. 
I don't need any of the small herbalist camp garbage, man. Now that the obelisk is done. So there are rewards, and I think I can unassign this guy. And... No, I'm dumb. Okay, nope, this needs to work like this. Okay. So my beavers are devastated. They have pickled goods. They need biscuits. They need beaver housing and clothing and education. Leisure. But I think that once... Once this gets uh, completed constructing... Oh, we don't have any wood. Well, that is no good. Dude, you know what? Just chop. Chop, you turkeys. Alright, I'm just gonna have them chop. Because again, I want to get my clay house up so I can begin producing the clay pots and use these tools. I mean, I'm probably going to use parts because I think they're just easy. So she says, I love how this game uses the mobile game trope, unlocks an X time in a way that actually creates compelling gameplay. Yeah, I know so many games that have done that are just, they're just bad devs. <laughs> Honestly, they're just bad devs. But I really like the structure of this, where it actually feels like it ties into the gameplay. Okay, I'm gonna go try to get that T. And stay at 1x speed. Okay, I'm running. I'm running. Ah, yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, my God, yes. The sweet effervescence of plain green tea. Jesus, Curtis says, is it me or has today's gameplay been chaotic? Uh, I've been chaotic. I've been chaotic as fuck today. That's certainly true. Ah. Choose a cornerstone. Great. Oh, we have more. We have more people. <laughs> Only beavers? No, I should probably get this. Cornerstone global production speed is 30 Traders will arrive slower. I hate traders. Newly discovered resource nodes have more charges for small deposits than for large. Yes, absolutely. Because I want to do a lot of glades in Spain. You know what that means. Dude, and nothing's beating aglets today, that's for sure. Nothing is beating aglets. So now we have some cutters. I'm going to continue to move these up. No, no. Move. R, R. And I'm just going to kind of like vaguely sweep nearby here. Let's try some Stargate close beta. I assume you mean Stormgate. I assume you mean Stormgate, but what I have seen of this closed beta is this morning I saw that Grubby was having connection issues. And then I went live with Against a Storm. And that is... And Stargate is a great TV show. <laughs> oh my god. I'm real curious, because I mean, like, the, the fact of the matter is, when it comes to, like, how I interface with games... Give me that. Um, I, I just don't stream or play a lot of early access games in beta, stuff like that. Um, and I mean, I was actually saying this right as I was starting going live with this stream, that for me, my hype for something is only so much until I sit down and really play it. Like on a scale of one to 10, 100% of games that I have not yet played are at most a three. Uh, and then once I've sat down to play them, yeah, great, now I can, form thoughts and have opinions. I mean, even against the, the storm that I thought was brilliant. I think I streamed it twice and then just like was, cool, I'll wait till it launches. 
because I, I think that there's kind of uh, a, a a bunch of categorical problems that can happen if you're trying to launch a game in early access where like, let's imagine you have a new player experience. This is something that I know happened with this game. You create a new player experience for this set of content. And then is the game paused? I think it is. Great. New player experience for this set of content. But this set of content is like the game. And then you start to encounter problems. So you change this and then you change this more and then you adjust this more, which is great for the long term. But what it means is that this onboarding new player experience is weird because it now builds you up and connects to not what it originally did. And, and so you can get a lot of like early access titles or alpha titles or beta titles that have like enough change and adjustment going on or enough stuff that's waiting to come that I, I think it's like more fair to the dev to just not make a judgment, to be like, no, yeah, I mean, like you have my interest. Cool, I'll see you at launch. Uh, and, and be cool with that. Uh, and I think some of you may know, I like real-time strategy games. Huh. I mean, even Age of Sigmar, that I know a lot of people were getting real horny to rag on. Um, I thought the Against the Storm, or uh, Against the Storm, excuse me. Yeah, Age of Sigmar, I know a lot of people were really excited to to crap on Realms of Ruin. But I thought the single player was pretty fun. You know what I mean? Um... So yeah, no, I mean like Stormgate literally needs to share no information for me to be excited about it at launch. You know what I mean? <laughs> like literally if they were like, Sean, it's an RTS. I'm like, great, see you on launch day. <laughs> you, you, I'm sold, I'm in, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so, I mean, the the, the fact that it's in its um, beta state, I, I my understanding is that there's Two factions, 1v1 in co-op. This is my understanding based upon what I saw of Grubby's screen when he was trying to connect and he couldn't get into matchmaking. My understanding is that, like, that's what's there. And I don't know what the final content's going to look like. But I'd be curious to know if any of you have seen the stuff today and what your reactions are. Air Daddy says, very excited for Tastos to try to explain to you what's happening at DreamHack. Is that DreamHack Atlanta? Dude, my family fucking respects NDAs too much. Nick was like, hey, I'm going to be in Atlanta. Can't really say why for a bit, but, you know, if you want to maybe meet me up in Atlanta. And of course, like, I was like, I was like, no, I can't believe you would spring that on me. Uh, but yeah, then then I did wind up seeing this morning that uh, he was casting like a show match for it. Is that right? Yeah. All right, I'm going back in. I don't think it's the 17th. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of like piecing some stuff together from what people have said. Okay, so I need this thing to get done. I'm doing all sorts of goblins. Oh, yeah, that's right. So now we have two more orders we can pick. Great. And I do have some more buildings we can select. So have at least 16 villagers with the basic housing need fulfilled for 20 seconds. That seems good. I don't want to do any of this resolve stuff. I don't want to discover any more glades. Perfect. Um, I need to forge a lot of herbs. Okay, I need to make basic building materials. This this seems, this seems like what I want to do because all of these can be made with a crude workstation. Gonna do this. All right, cool. Resolve's pretty low. <laughs> Sapphire Nightmare Blades is like sadly told my RTS guys out a three v three. That was part of the early announcement, if I recall correctly. And we could form a team, and one of them explained to me he only played Age of Empires and had no interest in even trying it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean Age of Empires team games are absolutely out of control and very fun. Oh, Joe was asking if I saw the GTA 6 trailer. Dude, I am, like, behind. I saw that the trailer's out, but I have not done it. I have been preoccupied. All right. 
Dude, Max Polaro. Says, dude, I just wanted to let you know that you're one of the reasons that my life is on a happy place nowadays. Started following you in 2006 because of you. I started on content creation in 2010. For some time, I started doing this. And as a job, now it's been six years. I've gotten paid to do it. I'm a Brazilian. It changed my life. Thanks so much, Day9. I'm a better gamer and a better person because you. Oh, my God. Thank you, Max. Oh, my God. That's amazing to hear. Six years full time. Dude, Max, post your links in chat. Everyone get ready. Max is going to plug his stuff. We got to get in it. We got to get in it. You know what? I actually am going to... I'm going to build a mine here in a sec, I think. Let's see here. Brewery has... Ooh, a carpenter. Yeah, I'm going to get a carpenter. YouTube.com slash Max Polaro. Well, dude, hell yeah. Everyone give Max Polaro a follow and a howdy. And a howdy, howdy, howdy. Okay, what am I doing? Need for basic housing. All right, let's 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 come back to some of our objectives. Guildmas is the best design game I've ever played. Yeah, I, I like how challenging and intense it feels without combat. I just think that's really, really fascinating. Because there's so many combat-driven games. <laughs> there's like so many of them. And I've also played non-combat games that are just not that intense. God, I need this thing to be done. Oh, I'm a dumb, dumb, dumb ass. I thought it was regular wood. I didn't know it was planks. So I've been holding my own self up. So I'm going to smash this workshop here. This should be able to get built because this is regular wood. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my God, mama mia. So now we're gonna we're 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 still on this trek to try to complete this. Holy shit! When did that happen? Dude, I'm so bad. Why did I get that tea? I should have stopped if I wanted to talk to you. I can't believe! Oh my god. Uh, can't believe I've done this. I'm awful. I'm awful at games. It takes two minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, I can't believe it. this game sucks. It's the worst game I've ever played. Give these beavers some Zweihanders so that way they can start stabbing stuff so I can get some gameplay here, huh? I don't believe it. This thing's detonating. Give the beavers a Zweihander. Again, I really want to play some Elden Ring. So the biggest thing that we'll need is planks. <laughs> Your Team Liquid, get your shit together. I'm just a guy that owns a Team Liquid shirt. They can't do nothing to me. They can't do nothing to me. All right, I, I I really think that I'm playing pretty terribly, but that's fine. We got a lot of food, we got mushrooms, we have eggs, we have roots. We're getting three roots a minute. Copper vein. So, I mean, th this is one thing that's nice, is that I, I, I'm getting a little distracted because, frankly, I kind of want to take a break and just chat for, like, ten minutes, which I might do in a moment. But a lot of the city building games that I play, if I get a little distracted and then I sort of, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm back, I'm, I'm, I'm to attention, I'm here, I'm focusing. Um, I have to put in a lot of effort to just identify what the heck the game state is. And this is why I think that the design of this game is so smart. I can just immediately flush my brain of thoughts and go, what are my orders? Oh yeah, get housing. Oh yeah, get these basic building materials. Hey, wait a minute. I can actually probably do this and this. Do I have anything that does this? I have leathers. Ah, maybe I can't do that yet. I mean, I need to find plant fibers, reeds. I'll probably do stones. Why is it not showing? All right, that's a little wonky. I think it's a bug. Yeah, it, it can just let me know what I need to do. It can let me know how I'm doing. It's just great. Smokehouse, cool. What does this send to the Citadel? Yeah, I'm definitely doing this. Yeah. <coughs> I 
<laughs> this is pure city building or is there combat? It's pure city building. It's a lot of just, it just has a lot of nice tension. Just a lot of nice city building-esque tension. Hey, there's the explosion. What's this? The Korth machine is unstable and could explode any minute. Fucking what? Don't make this anymore. Make me planks. Uh, where do I want this to go? Alright, so I, I didn't get super host. Oh shit, it destroyed my large... Oh, it destroyed the large resource nest. No. No. Is there a lose condition? Yes, that is this loss bar filling up. Queen's impatience just fills over time, and certain things that you can mess up, like making your citizens unhappy, that can also contribute to that. So I, I need... Um, I only have 13 citizens, so I'll soon enough need more nerds. So, okay, so this needs to get done so I can get the building materials for this. We're chilling for a sec. As I sit by the beautiful blue hues of whatever these mushroom trees are. I don't know what the blue version of chlorophyll is, but they are absolutely pumped up with that juice. Chlorophyll is a type of juice, by the way, much like orange or apple. Oh my god, aglets just gets me. Oh my god, aglets is the funniest thing I've ever heard. So, I mean, we're getting enough food for our citizens. If I get a mine here. Borophil? Is that what it's called? <laughs> All right. It's just not morning without a big old glass of chlorophyll juice. Yeah. LOL, no, that's an Adam Sandler joke from 30 years ago. What is? What? It, it still holds up. So, I mean, really, I'm just waiting for construction of this, and then I can begin to bang out pots, and then after I'm done banging out pots, I can bang out this. I still haven't, like, done that much stuff. God, I need this thing built so fast. Reasonable games been watching since SC2 launch. Love you, but I mean, it's good to have you here. It's good to have you here. We're hanging on well. I mean, the game has gotten a little bit straightforward for the moment, a little bit linear. Oh my god, please. First things first, give me this. This woodcutter's camp, I don't think I need any of them here, but I would love some of these guys here. I also want to make sure that I have both of these pumping out some wood and some bricks, I think is the right thing to be doing. Yep, let's make stone, because we have stone deposits nearby. And then this. Uh, I'm going to assign a worker here. So this worker should begin to bring the parts over. What else can I do? do I, yo, I have so much wood. Okay, so what other things could I possibly need to do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we'll ever evolve past Aglet. I think that's that's the word of the day for sure. Excellent. Trapper's camp's nearby. Now, I'm going to do something a little weird. For YouTube, everything's going to be boring. I'm just going to end the segment like a normal person. Um, and then if you watch the next video, it'll be the next video of me playing right after here, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different with respect to Twitch. I'm gonna take a mini break where I stay here and sip my tea and talk to you. What do you think about that? Okay, hold on, we're just, oh. Oh my God, it's just very hot in this room and I got being with you, you're just, you just get me going. Oh, oh.